All right, let's open up a prayer. Lord, thank you for my favorite uh, meeting every month. Training class. It's wonderful. Amen. All right, let's go over a couple things real quick. Uh, I mentioned last night about people coming here asking for money and don't give them any money. It's not because we don't like them. It's just that uh, if somebody uh, gets money, then the next thing they do is what? Money. They want more money. And people that are uh, that ask for money are usually street smart. And uh, they may not have any academics or, you know, don't even have a GED. That's got nothing to do with your street smarts. And uh, they read people very easily. So, and they have to to survive. So if they come to here and they think people are giving them money, then they're going to start scanning other potential units of revenue. That's how a mega church sees you. You're a unit of revenue. So they don't want you to go to another church because they lose a unit of revenue. Well, homeless people are the same thing. You're a unit of revenue. And they're very intelligent in reading people, analyzing them, getting a feel for their emotions. Very good at it. And so if you give them money, then they'll go to another person for money. And they'll go to another person. And then that person will not come back here. This one might come back. This one won't. And so it causes people to feel uncomfortable. Okay? Uh, I give uh, a buck or two to the guy on the street corner, but I give him a little picture of Jesus, you know, that one picture of Christ holding that guy. Yeah. That one. I give him that little picture with it. I, I never give him, just give him money. Because uh, where that's money's going to go is usually uh, not into a college fund. It's going to go usually into a bottle of hooch or something like that. So I give him the card with it. So they'll maybe keep that in their pocket. I'm just trying to plant a little seed. It may amount to nothing, but at least that's a shot, you know. But. Uh, other people don't like people going up to the door or looking in or they feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's just the way people are. They, they don't like it. And um, so anyway, we can't do that here anymore. And I, I took the guy inside and said, hey, that was for you. I go, you got to stop doing that. Does that a lot. Well, uh, not only him, but anybody else that comes in, because we get a lot of people coming here, the mentally ill, and uh, some of them are homeless and so on. So I thought I would just formalize it. Yeah. It's just not good to do it. It's not that we don't want to help them. It's just that it, the ripple effect is negative. Mm -hmm. Negative. And people are not going to want to come back here if they think they're going to get hit. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will stay in this lane if they see a guy on the island there. They won't go into that lane because they feel uncomfortable. Their soul picks it up. Ugh. Or their guilt kicks in. The demons will talk to them and say, hey, look at you, you're driving a car, you, why don't you give him something? And then they feel kind of guilt, so they'll stay in this lane when they go through instead of that lane. See? And uh, don't raise your hands if that's how you handle it. But I'm just telling you, that's the way people are. People are very soul sensitive. And they don't like to feel uncomfortable. That's why deliverance ministries, generally speaking, don't go anywhere. Okay, so here in Phoenix, we got deliverance coming out of our yin yangs. Um, I don't know if there's another city in the country like Phoenix. We had Isaiah 61 here. We had Bob Larson here. We had Dave Middleton here. We're here. Who would I miss? There's a hundred satellite outfits roaming around Maricopa County. It's unbelievable. Uh, most states don't even have a deliverance ministry. One. 
and we got them all over the joint here. But for some reason, Arizona, they don't really like them. It's weird. You know, Isaiah 61 doesn't hold meetings anymore. Bob Larson closed his church down. He just travels now. No, Dave Middle. He just charges like 395 for 15 minutes. Yeah, so he, he's traveling and, and uh, doing his thing, like she said. But he used to have a church up in north, north uh, Phoenix, remember that? He closed that down. And um, Dave Middleton's doing good, but he's kind of stagnant. This is my church, and it's been like that for years. We struggle constantly with people coming and going. So deliverance is a, is a tough business to be in. It's not for the faint of heart. And it's not for people that need affirmations. So if you need somebody to, you're a good boy. Uh, that's, this isn't the ministry for you. Doing the janitorial work at the church, good. Driving the bus, landscaping. Uh, Sunday school, teach a Sunday school class. That's all good stuff. Go do that. Because then people will say, thank you for coming in. And you're a good person. Yeah. Uh, this, <laughs> who, and if that bothers you, you, you don't get in this business. You've got to be self-sustaining, that's so to speak. Or you'll just crash and burn. This is a thankless business, generally speaking. Not all the time, but it's a thankless business. And the reasons are obvious. You know, the devil is fine with 99% of all ministries. This ministry, he takes a personal affront to. Because we're eating off his dinner table. And he don't like that. So, he fights it all the time. It's hard to survive. Uh, there's a lot of weird deliverances out there now. It's a very dangerous field to be in. Um, there's a deliverance revival going on in the country. There's like a dozen guys out there and gals getting huge likes and clicks on YouTube. Huge. And uh, it's like Bob Larson on steroids. It's the manifestations gone wild. See, um, this meeting here is not going to get any clicks. Why? It's not entertaining enough. Uh, we're going over some basic truths here. And it's for people that want to change and want to make some personal improvements. And that's not going to get what, you know, Bob learned it years ago that if you can sensationalize it, you can make money off of it. You can sell books. And he did a good job of it. You got major manifestors roaring. And people are, well, that's odd. That's interesting. Hmm. But eventually they go click and they delete it. See? Systematic desensitization. Once you get used to being entertained by deliverance, it then loses its value because human nature is such that that's not exciting anymore. I need something new. Okay? And if you do that in your personal life with your relationships, it's a total disaster. You end up dying alone and broke with multiple divorces. You can only give away half your stuff every five years before you're going to die broke. Period. You cannot constantly need to be entertained. Now, that's not what life's about. <laughs> Most of life is not entertaining. <laughs> Most of life is work. See? So we don't do the sensationalism on deliverance. 
and I don't try to get manifestors to go nuts mm -hmm. for internet. I knew that was wrong from the beginning. And uh, I'll tell you a short story. We used to have a guy come to the meetings every uh, time at the House of Healing years ago. And uh, I was counseling the guy. He was a schizophrenic. And he was a, kind of a short, squatty guy, bald. And uh, I talked to his family. I talked to his psych psychiatrist. Um, we were working with him. He would come to the services. He would sit in the back. And to my left, he'd sit back there near the bathroom. And as soon as the altar call started, uh, there they would go. The demons would go. And he would be screaming and doing all kinds of weird things. Well, back then, I didn't have the experience or knowledge to, to handle that. So I just, I thought I was supposed to let the Lord handle everything. So I would just let him go. And I didn't know at the time, he had already gone through the Bob Larson system. He'd been over there numerous times doing the same thing. Yeah. And uh, I was trying to get the guy to take control of his thoughts and repent of listening to demons. I was trying to go at it through that venue. They were trying to cast demons out of him. And of course, he was a major manifester, going nuts. And I'm sitting at home uh, watching the news, and they're having a uh, segment on deliverance. I thought, that's for me. And it's this guy. My client is on the TV <laughs> with Bob Larson at his house. <laughs> and at that time, Bob was trying to get his daughters into deliverance. And he was trying to get them a reality show. So they went over to, I wish I could remember his name. I've got his paperwork. Do you remember his name? No, I don't uh, remember. Well, anyway, they did the same deliverance on TV. It was on the news. And then he wore himself out, and then they gave him a hug. They were so glad he was delivered. And that was the segment on the evening news. Channel 3, I think, did it. Well, I called Channel 3. I said, hey, that's my client. I'm, I'm counselor over here at the House of Healing. You just had my client on television. What are you doing? He said, well, we were running the thing on deliverance. No, listen, that's not deliverance. They've, they do that to him all the time. That whole thing was staged. Mm -hmm. They knew he would manifest. Mm -hmm. All they had to do was say or do, and boom, he'd trigger. See, that was, that was a manipulation thing. The guy says to me, well, it's on the air now, so eh, thanks for calling. Click. No interest in anything I had to say. Blew me off faster than you've ever seen anybody. I was gone. Click. Hung the phone up. It was just something for TV. That's all it was. And so I learned years ago that this... This is not just... This is not for TV. It's not to put people out there like they're psychos and get a, a newsreel or clicks or something to market a reality. I don't, we don't do that here. That's, that's immoral Amen. from my view. <laughs> so deliverance is getting weird and it's, it's getting really bad. They're casting demons out of people in parks and in parking lots and in malls and it's all sensationalism and people are very interested in the spiritualism and that's the flavor of the tribulation. Everything's going to be spiritualized in a few years when that thing, this thing starts. And the false prophet's going to rise to power. And he's the most dangerous person that ever lived. He props up the Antichrist. And he gets everybody to follow the Antichrist with supernatural powers. He's a, a cult on super steroids injectables. This is the guy that's coming. He's probably alive right now somewhere in the world. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's alive right now.
I really wouldn't. I think we're that close, but everything. Hey, do you know about the guy in, in Israel, in Jerusalem? Who's the Messiah? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this, this spiritual stuff, 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 Go like that from here on in, right into the tribulation. Boom. And it's going to be the sickest crap you've ever seen in your life, period. You know, and that's where we're headed. So, uh, what I'm trying to do, <laughs> and it's a debatable, my job uh, is debatable whether I'm doing a good one or not. That's for you to judge. I'm trying to get a, get a, a rational system of deliverance based on the basics of Scripture, which is repentance and confessing your sins and so on, as opposed to sensationalizing it to try to get revenue and acceptance and people to like me and so on. I abandoned that years ago for, <laughs> for this. And so this ain't easy. So you uh, coming into it, if you're going to be doing this, you know, it's not easy. And uh, if your reward is anything other than helping the person, you're going to be in big trouble down the road. That's got to be your, your thanks, even if they don't thank you. Amen. That's how it really works. Not like YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> so that's going to explode soon. Uh, this guy called me. We got a new resource here. I'll just leave it in the back here. This is a rehab program. You know them, Pete? Anyway, he wants to partner with us. I'm trying to get a... a, a they have men's groups over there and they have Bible studies and so on. So I'm trying to get us a, a gig over there to go over and pray for the guys. So if you know somebody needs a referral, there's no cost to it. Housing, right here. So it's, it's worth a look. You know, I just talked to him on the phone. Seemed like a great guy. I have not met him in person, though, so I can't totally vouch for anything. But if you check it out, will you give me a report on it and give me your impressions of it? That would be good. <clears throat> All right. Now, Dave Middleton. I went over this, what, two months ago? Month ago. Was it a month ago? Last month. Last month. Last month. Last month. Last month. How'd that go? How's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Yeah. Following instructions. Not referring people there, but... We still go there because I need the Word of God, so I get the Word there. I, I, it helps me. I don't send people there. I understand. I'm careful with the going in the heavenlies. I don't practice that myself. But um, I like Dave Milton, but Every, Everything he just said, I said a month ago. Yeah. Everything he just said, I would like him. does a great job. Bible study is beautiful. If you want to go there, great. I agree with everything Pete says. Just to clarify, you, you basically say, while we're here. Hmm. These people. people. Yeah, people on your staff while we're here. These people. Yeah. Don't refer them over there. No. Got it. Yeah. That's all it was. If you want to go there, great. He's a great Bible teacher. Love his radio shows. I'm a Dave Middleton fan. Yeah? Been supporting him for years. Half the people that go to his church came from right here. Okay? I don't send them over to the Episcopal Church. I send them over to Middleton's for years. Okay? So that, that sets a red flag. Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Why would he be sending all those people over there? Uh, he must like the guy. Well, oh, gee, I'm having an IQ burst there. Mm -hmm. Duh. Okay. Duh. Okay, I supported him for years. I helped him build his church. And nobody asked me. I did it voluntarily. I like the guy. And that's all I said. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the tape and 
look at exactly what I said. So if you got mad at me, you got a problem. Because I never criticized the guy. You got a problem. So you need to fix it. If somebody wants to go to Dave Middle and go to that church, hey, no problem. Anything? Any problems? <laughs> okay, got that straightened out. Okay, let's get to this real quick. Uh, has everybody seen this? I hope so. I'm getting tired of going over it. <laughs> so let's uh, let's uh, take a quiz. Uh, your free will relates to what? Your mind. The mind is correct. Where does your spirituality attach to? Spirit, Spirit is correct. <laughs> Emotions go where? Soul is right. What do we have for the winters, Monty? Winters, Monty. Uh, door number three. Your morality goes to. Content. Right. Your physicality is related to. Yeah. Beautiful. So you know then that y you can pick up demons or become infected with them in the womb. Right. We know that, correct? Yes. And you can be infected with them during childhood. Right? Yes. And when you get born again, you can also become infected with spirits depending upon your sinful behavior after you're a Christian. Correct? Correct. <laughs> after you start going through deliverance, which is after you've become a Christian, you can expect counterattacks and you can become infected with spirits after you start your deliverance. Correct? In fact, it happens all the time. It stops after you die. And then you, you can't... The, the devil is kaput after he, it's over. You go to heaven and you're in glory forever. We hit it. Okay? So, we know that this person here, this guy's a blockhead, but when you are living in sin, you are collecting spirits because you're lying, cheating, committing adultery, uh, whatever you're doing. You broke all the Ten Commandments and you broke the 600 in the Law of Moses, and you broke the 1,000 in the New Testament, you're a lawbreaker. Correct? That's the definition of a sinner. You're a lawbreaker. The laws of God. And so you're picking up spirits while you're breaking God's laws. So they can come in on, gosh, any kind of sin at all. There's, there's no way to itemize it. There's so many. Right? So, the human body is a, is a demonic collector. And so they get into the person in layers. Right here, see? So, we know that sometimes after you become born again, uh, sometimes some spirits leave certain people. Sometimes they don't. Depends on the case. Okay? And there, there's no formal deliverance involved. The, the anointing, when the Holy Spirit entered your spirit man and you became a child of God, this thing popped out or something. You know? I've talked to people that said, uh, when I got born again, 
I totally lost my desire to smoke. I've heard that several times. So that smoking spirit must have just somehow got booted out by the Holy Ghost as an act of mercy. And other things can happen. You know, I don't have all the answers, and I don't exactly know how everything works. Uh, in order to attain that status, what I do is I, I ask my wife. So what it is, is you've got these layers of spirits in there. And, uh, you know, everybody basically has them to a greater or lesser degree. So this stack here for Adolf Hitler would be clear up past the roof. Uh, your grandmother may be here. Everybody's different. Fingerprints. Depending on what you've been in. Right? And then we know that spirits are all different kinds of them. So depending on what kind of sin you're in, you can pick up those kinds of demons. Right? So sexual perversion demon would be different from this a Ouija board demon. Things like that, right? At some point here, hopefully, and that's what we do around here, we're trying to get this born-again Christian to start going through deliverance so they can be healed. Yeah. Now, the problem is when they start going through deliverance, usually the weaker demons come out first. Here, so, and that's usually a cough or a yawn or something, right? And then hopefully this person continues their journey with you encouraging them, and they're whittling this load down. Whittle, whittle, whittle. And your goal is to get down here uh, to the controllers, the, the monsters. Uh, these spirits tend to use these as buffers, or they try to trick you, you know? Sometimes you'll get a batch out, and then what happens is the person starts feeling better. They go, I feel better. Yeah. Yeah. So the demons then tell the person, we're gone. Because uh, these demons that left took with them these symptoms. Demons have symptoms, right? So this anger spirit came out, and the symptoms of blowing your stack disappeared, okay? So then the spirits that are left in there tell the person, you're done. You're healed. You're doing great. You did a good job. And then they start complimenting you which is what the person wants to hear because they want to serve God and they care and they want a ministry of some kind. They want an anointing or what have you, whatever their goals are, which are good goals. And we want them to have those goals. The demons then jump in. The, the controllers then tell them, hey, tell them that they're well on their way to their ministry. They're looking great and they're feeling good. <laughs> So they reverse field on you. Here they're tormenting you and torturing you. You know, depression, fear, anxiety, loneliness, whatever they're hitting you with. Addictions, all that stuff. Now they flip it on you and they start helping you. They start telling you, hey, you did a good job with your deliverance. Dang, look at that. All these symptoms are gone. Uh, you're an expert on deliverance. <laughs> you ought to have a reality show. <laughs> and so they try to convince you that you can now 
help others because you're good to go. This is going to happen all the time to you in virtually every case. The next thing they're going to do is tell you, you need to, as a deliverance expert, you need to get into the ministry. You need to start helping others. Yeah? So the person then starts doing some kind of ministry. And then these start attacking again. <gasps> so the person who thought they were clear then does what human nature is telling them to. They try to compensate for it by doing more ministry and staying busy for Jesus. I'm a busy beaver for Jesus. Okay? The demons then back off, which is what they wanted them to do. They wanted them to increase their ministry activity. The idea being, you see, these people at the 12th floor make a bigger splat than the ones on the second floor who jump or get pushed off. Are you following me? So, since you're so busy with ministry, you are, you are thinking, hey, these are all gone here. Until they push you off the ledge. And then the person crashes, and then they all launch an attack. Deliverance doesn't work. God doesn't love you. And then the last state of the man is worse than the first. What I'm trying to point out here is the psychiatry of demons, how they think. They're manipulators. Yeah. When they push yeah. you off, is that when the little ones come back? They what? When they push you off on the ledge. Yeah, they, they all come back and then they add, bring more. Gotcha. Matthew 12. Amen. Then the last state of the man is worse than the first. See? So, what we're trying to teach these people is that, listen, there are spirits within you. You don't even know they're there because you spent uh, sometimes decades living in sin. And you didn't even know you had demons for decades. Now you've been going through deliverance and you're feeling better. Okay, your symptoms have improved, but you've got to remember that did they come out? The, the big dogs. Because they'll try to go dormant on you. And then they'll try to get you to expand your ministry. Oh, I got, I'm pastoring one church. I got to open up another one. Then I'm going to get another one. Then I'm going to get another church. And then these demonic symptoms start coming back. But the busier the person is, the less they have to think about it or focus on it. See that? It's all being done to get you to keep climbing for God so that when they shove you off the top you make a bigger splat than you would have if you just stayed down here. Like the guy that cried his, that his head, remember that pastor that cried when he said he's, I've sinned and all that was the name? Uh, 
you just described about 200 pastors. Now here's the situation. <clears throat> what happens is, what happens is this, okay? Uh, these mega church pastors, all these people that don't understand any of this. They just don't get it. Okay? And it's easy not to get because if you have natural giftings or you have spiritual gifts from God and you have skills and abilities and talents from, from God or from yourself, as long as you're focusing on that, then they stay hidden, they stay dormant, and they don't have to get kicked out. See that? Yeah. So what happens is with all these mega churches and all these people falling, having affairs, stealing money, all these embarrassing scandals, that's this thing. The demons helped them develop a worldwide whatever. See, the bigger it gets, the better it is for the demons because the fall is greater and more embarrassing. The way God wanted them to do it was just keep going here until these are gone, okay? Then the doors open supernaturally without any demonic help. See, these demons open ministry doors. I'm being blessed. So it's a setup. What, what makes them jump off the 12th floor? Is that because they let the guard down and, and, and they keep it well, the well, if, back in them? Well, yeah, if, they, if they're not doing this, getting in, they've already let their guard down. They're already, they think they're healed, and they're not. Okay, so the, they have symptoms of demons, but they're so busy ministering that they're buried. You're buried. You don't notice it. You don't have to face it. You don't have to think about it. The person knows this is happening, but they don't understand it, and they won't do anything about it, okay? This person here who's doing all these ministries knows that there's stuff wrong with them. They know it. Hey, I said this. I, I did that. Oh, God, where did that come from? Why did I react that way? Ooh, man, I got matter and a hornet there. What? There's symptoms of spirits, but... Now that they're ministering, they can't do anything about it because it's too embarrassing. That's a mistake. Hmm? And that's a mistake that they don't do anything about it right there. Well, yeah, because the demons want them to keep going up the God ladder, becoming famous as a Christian, so the crash is more embarrassing. But... Do they really know what to do? I mean, I haven't really, I've saw a lot of different places. I haven't seen the information that you provide in regards to how to slowly continue working on the miracle list or getting rid of them. So do they know what steps to take? No, because uh, deliverance is, like I said, it's, it's crapped out. <clears throat> So you go to the park on YouTube, you blast these out, right? Boom, that's amazing. And that's good. I'm glad they're getting delivered. That's positive, okay? It's not positive if you don't tell them the rest of the story, okay? You need to continue with your repentance. You need to sanctify your life. You need to get your mind renewed. You need to get full of the Word. You need to finish getting these out, okay? And if the person doesn't want to do it, or they feel uncomfortable, or it's going to damage their current ministries, they're too busy expanding their next one, all they're doing is riding off like Thelma and Louise. They're, that's a great ride until the thing goes down.
This happens all the time. But how does the Lord expect them to know what steps to take to get rid of the rest? Of them? Well, the Bible tells you what steps to take. Okay. You, you know you have to confess your sin. You know you have to repent of your sin. Mm -hmm. right? You started going through deliverance here, so you know that what the symptoms of demons are. Lust, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, whatever it is. Whatever your, your soul is into. You, your negative emotions are pointing a Klieg light to I'm in, still infected. Right. See? But because the demons got you to get busy for Jesus, be. you either don't notice it or you're not going to do anything about it because you're too busy serving the Lord. So then isn't it more dangerous for people who don't even know about deliverance at all? Yes. I'm trying, uh, which is what I'm trying to fix right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, just the uh, theoretical question. Do you think Swagger ever went through with deliverance after the sin? No, he never, they don't do deliverance over there. But <clears throat> No, it's not all lies. He's, he, he repented. What? Because his sin found them out. He fell. Yeah, but he repented. He's, he's back to booming again. But no, he never went through deliverance. But, yeah. No, no, he's in his 80s now. Okay, he's winding up. He's going to be dead soon. He has a show, though. He has another show. He has everything going again. He's booming. Yeah, he repented. He wouldn't give up. God forgave him, and he went on with his church, doing a good job. What should have happened to Swagger was before he got in the ministry when he was in his early 20s. He should have gone through deliverance back then. See? He had lust demons. Him and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, his cousin, they used to sneak over to the honky-tonk at night in the back, they said, and peek in and watch the girls. Okay, so they were loading up on lust demons when he was young. See? Those demons totally destroyed his cousin, Jerry Lee Lewis. Wrecked his life. Yeah. And darn near wiped out Jimmy Swagger. That's how powerful these demons are when you don't do anything about them. So they brought Jerry Lee Lewis here uh, in the secular world of music. The guy was the biggest thing on the planet. When you're way up here, the fall hurts more and is harder. They promoted Jimmy Swagger to the top evangelist in the world, him and Billy Graham. Boom! Down they brought him. Why? They outsmart everybody. They want you to get religious and serve God and get busy, busy, busy and ignore this. You didn't finish you're delivering. You started it, which you did a good job, but you didn't finish it. And quiet at night while you're staring at the ceiling, the person knows something's still wrong. Whether they admit it or not, they know that that felt, ugh, there's something going on in there. So they are thinking ministry is good because it allows them to stay in there because the person is too busy to do anything about it. Keep your mind off of them. Right. When the building's up. Correct. This is how smart they are. What I just told you a handful of people in the United States know what I just told you. They would tell you, I am a heretic. I'm a psycho. They'd swear to it. I'm crazy. Do you get attacked a lot on the computer? Or the That's none of your business, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what they're doing here is... Like he said, you're so occupied with doing good things, so busy, or it could be secular things, 
raising your family, soccer practice, kids. The, they want you to stay busy. Christianity, busy, sin, busy, busy, busy. So they don't have to get kicked out of there. So now you're working 80 hours a week. You were working 70. See, anything. Don't use anything to stay in there. So if they have to bless you with relationships, money, business success, what have you, they'll do it. To stay, stay in power. To stay in power. Yeah. This whole country is run by demon-possessed billionaires. And they built them. They wanted them to be filthy rich. Yeah. Hear that confirmation? <laughs> they're, they're making people successful. Where do you think Tony Robbins came up with all that crap? They inspired him. This is supernatural. Works in Christianity, works in the secular world. Doesn't matter to them. As long as they get to stay in there. And the person, while well, they're laying in bed at night, staring at the ceiling, in a moment of reflection, or as alcoholics call it, a moment of clarity, they go, hey, you know what? This illness, I went to the doctor, there's no diagnosis, it's weird, they don't know what's wrong with me. Re Something's wrong. Oh, I, yeah, that lady at work, she said this and that to me. Now, why did that trigger me? I, I felt like getting up and slapping that biatch. Where'd that come from? Well, there it is. See, they know something's in there. They sense it. But they're so busy serving God or soccer practice, they're too busy to do anything about it. And that's the curse of America because in the developed countries, people have things to do. In undeveloped countries, there's nothing to do. So they go to witchcraft and things like that. You're not working 80 hours a, a week in Uganda building a giant business. You're trying to survive with food. So this is, this is a very effective with England, America, European countries, developed countries. You can, the devils can keep you busy. <laughs> So they don't have to leave. Okay. So what happens is these demons here, these familiar spirits, they're the worst ones. They get in people's brains and they start pumping them up. And they start giving them blessings. And it's usual spiritual blessings. If they sense the person is, loves God and, is, and wants spiritual benefits from God, blessings, giftings, what have you, they will provide them. And how do they do that? Well, they use the Word of God. They got it all memorized. Hey, Harry. You know what? You're just like Isaiah the prophet. Did you see that? You see that download he got from God? You're a born-again Christian. You should be getting downloads. You want a download? I sure do. Hallelujah. Boop. I got a vision. Oh, there's a sign. I just saw the, the letters... ABC 40 times today. I think it's of God. And they start pumping the person full of spiritual benefits. So, is that what's running through the like the prophetic conferences? Who, what? The prophetic conferences that everyone has? Yeah, don't go there. They're giving the person prophetic conferences. <laughs> Showing you how to develop. Here's how you do it. 
Okay? So they come up with blessing boards, kind of like Ouija boards. Okay? And then they have uh, destiny cards. Okay, you sit down with a spiritual advisor, a Christian, you pray over it. You know, you hold your hands like that. The Lord would say to you, this uh, oh, that's a relationship card. God is going to bless your relation. Oh, look at that. And then you've got all these people downloading visions, words, voices, repetitive numbers. It's endless. It's endless. Tricks. I think that destiny board at Bethel is the same size as a Ouija board. And there's a planchet that goes with it. And you pray, and you can get answers from God. So what happens is the person then becomes loaded with these familiar spirits. They reside in the brain, in here. The Holy Spirit's here. The familiar spirits are in the brain, both working in the mind. And the person becomes, as my granddad used to say, so spiritually minded, they're no earthly good. You ever met anybody like that? All they talk about is, you know, the end of the world, the rapture. Is it pre-trib? Is it post-trib? Is it mid-trib? Uh, uh, it's all spiritual, man. Oh, I saw this today. I saw that today. And you look at them and you go, my God, you've got all this Bible knowledge. You've got all this spirituality. It's amazing. Why is your life in total chaos? So these familiar spirits have this contradiction you'll see in these people's lives. They got all this spirituality and they need 10 bucks for gas. Had they gone and finished their deliverance and gotten those things out of there, they would have known that the Bible guarantees you God will provide all your needs. The rest of their life sucks. No relationships, no money, no friends, all kinds of problems. But they quote verses by the yard and they got deep insight into your problems. Experts on it. It's scary. Because these people almost never get delivered. Because they're too convinced that what they're doing is of a God. Why would they abandon God? Because you said it's familiar spirits. I don't believe you. Look at this is a blessing. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. I always see red before blue. It happens all the time. Yeah, I saw a car out there. It was red and then it had blue trim. Yeah. I went to Wendy's. I saw a gift card. It was red and blue. That's God talking to me. He wants me to eat at Wendy's. God must have a revival. He wants me to start at Wendy's. And then this thing starts to build. And all these crazy spiritual stuff. And the people looking at them that don't have those demons are going, Man, dude, slow the thing down. Listen, let's work on getting your rent paid. Right. <laughs> you mean you got all this spirituality and you got this in depth knowledge of the word and you got holes in your underwear? <laughs> really? Stop it. Stop it. But they're not able to stop it because they've taken over their mind and what they're giving them they enjoy. See? 
<laughs> is that the BJP person like you're talking about? <laughs> is that like the busy bee people that get real busy? No, no, those are those are ministry busy bees. This these are the spiritual ones. These are different than them. They hear from God. Can't straighten their life out to save their lives. Everything's nuts. But deep, deep dive. Are there lives other than the Lord's that are always kind of in disarray in other areas? Yeah, they get breaks here and there. The demons don't beat on them all the time. They build them up, fall. It's this syndrome here. Build them up, smash them, build them up. You can't smash somebody unless you build them up. They got to have something to fall. <clears throat> Brother, have you got a word for me? God. Awful. Okay. Yeah, it's called the Holy Bible. I got a word for you. I gave a lot of words at the teaching last night. I had them on the slides. I went through God's... I must be a spiritual genius. I give everybody a word. No, I can read. So, that doesn't work anymore, so now they've gone to desk boards, cards, I mean, this thing's getting insane. Yeah. And nobody catches it because they're brainwashers. It seems right, and this person got a benefit from it. So the positive connection must be right. And they don't understand the psychiatry of these spirits. They're happy to give somebody a blessing. They don't mind. As long as the deception continues. That's all they care about. It's deception. Right. In addition, these run in families. They come down from the tree, picking everybody off. We've had entire families come through here, couldn't get them delivered. Almost every person couldn't get delivered. Same demons. These demons tell you, you know what you're talking about, you're an expert. Well, once you, once you decide you're an expert, it's hard to take correction from somebody like me who's a non-expert. You don't want to listen to anybody. They don't listen. And they help him cover it up. You know, Jimmy picked up his lust demons when he was a kid with Jerry Lee. And he goes to a prostitute. She dances for him. And then he goes back home, finishes his sermon for Sunday. Well, they helped him cover it up. See, they were, they were building him up so that the fall would be enormous. See that? Well, that swagger concept applies to normal people. It's just not publicized because we're not famous. He's famous. And that was the purpose of it. They build people up who are famous so they can smash them. And the embarrassment goes everywhere. And of course, the bottom line is, Jesus is a kook. That's what the devil wants everybody to know. Jesus is a kook. And they can prove it. Look at that guy. Look at her. Certified idiot. Would that be the same thing that happened at Hillsong, where the guy, I think the Hillsong musician... There's been several of them. It's all the same. Okay, so that's what I thought. It's all the same. I used to go to a... 
the Dream Center in Scottsdale. And this was years ago. They had a, a music director there was spectacular. I mean, this guy was talented. And he was so good. Uh, Joel Olstein took him. He left the Dream Center and went to Joel Olstein. And he was the music guy for Joel Olstein's church. Big time. Sexual sin here. Affairs. Osteen. Ah, scandal. Affairs. No deliverance. The same lost demons were in Scott, the Dream Center. Now they were transported to Lakewood. Right? Same demons. And then, boom. Same scandal there. Happened here. Same procedure. So busy with music ministry, serving God, hallelujah, building you up to take you down. So Olstein put him on, what, six months sabbatical or something, you know. They put him in the counseling. <laughs> oh, jeez. Demons like you in counseling. They want you to go because then they can tell you you're fine. You went through counseling. You've been rehabilitated. <laughs> He's back. Why do they like you in counseling? Because it doesn't work. Deliverance, works. deliverance with counseling yeah. works, but counseling absent deliverance doesn't work. It's simply covering the thing. I did that for years. Cover it. Still there. Mm -hmm. That's a routine thing to have happen. If you knew what was going on in these music ministries, you would lay an egg. You would not even believe it. The carnality of these groups, singing groups, Christian groups. Huh. Unreal. They're like secular groups. I'm not joking. They're like secular groups. Yeah. What do you think of the use of uh, uh, psychotropic uh, drugs used for deliverance? They shouldn't be mixed. Well, you know, it depends on the case. Now, if you've got a severe SMI type case, uh, you know, like that guy I was just telling you about, the guy on the Bob Larson show, I called his psychiatrist and I said, uh, listen, you're giving him these meds, but I'm having these side effects. Man, they're bad. Can you, do you have an alternative? They said, yeah, we could try this. Okay, can you switch? He's going to come in. For, I'm going to tell him to get an appointment. Can you switch him over? because we're having these symptoms with the guy. And I've never had them say to me, I'm not going to help you, because they're, they're glad that somebody's working with their insane patient, because they can't cure them. So if, if I'm going to be doing it, rot's a ruck, as Grandpa used to say. <coughs> so they'll do what I ask them. If you call them and tell them, look, around these symptoms, I need to switch this or reduce the dose or whatever it is. Can we experiment with it and the client's okay with it? They'll go along with it. And that's what I did with that guy. But if the medication is not right or the dosage isn't right, it actually lets in more demons. So you can cast a bunch of demons out of somebody and then they go pick them back up over there. It's risky. But some medications will, on an SMI, slow down their thinking process, slows it down a little bit, so I'm able to get a little truth in. Okay? If their minds are racing at 5,000 miles an hour, they're, I can't get anything in. Okay? They won't listen to anything. They won't retain anything. 
So in some cases, the medication helps you a little bit. And then as you work with them and get more spirits out, then you can not eliminate the medication, but reduce it gradually because the body develops an addiction to it. And if you cold tur turkey them, they'll go crazy. And then all these things will get back in that you spent weeks or months getting out. You know, uh, Pastor Mike, when I when I stopped drinking, I, I I went I got some medication from my psychiatrist. Uh huh. But I always knew that the the mind can, can um, take care of itself once it just needs a little help. But I wasn't going to stay on the on the um, you know the medication to to make the anxiety and the, you know all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Now that's a catch twenty two. What he just said. Uh some clients, they go through deliverance and they got these demons out and the, the demons tell the person, you don't need your meds anymore. You're cured. Why don't you stop taking those without asking anybody? And then hell comes to breakfast. Now they all get back in and you got to start over. And so it's a, it's a mixed, you got to tread lightly, so to speak. But they, since you're feeling better, they've convinced you you're an authority on deliverance. You're doing such a great job and your anointing is so high. It's just amazing. We don't need any pills. Besides that, that's pharmacia. You heard the minister say it's pharmacia, didn't you? I sure did. Now it's nightmarachia. As they end their meds without asking anybody, and their symptoms go off the chart. So, uh, last night, this gal gets infected with a spirit of infirmity somewhere in here. She gets saved. Uh, the spirit of infirmity ruins her back. She goes in for multiple surgeries, then has a fusion. Yeah. Right? Then she comes here last night, and I'm praying for her, and she's not getting healed. So I tried it again. Failure. No healing. So I said, you know, this is probably a spirit. So I tried my hip maneuver. Never fails me. Failed me last night. I said, this is, this is definitely not a healing. This is a demon in there. He's, he's jacking me around. So I grabbed the gal. Mike, you pervert. No, I was grabbing that devil. Yeah. <laughs> she was crying in pain. And I squeezed her hard. And suddenly, this thing started moving in her back. Something was moving up the back. I squeezed tighter. And zoop, it went out. And then she goes like that in my arms. I'll hold her. Okay? And he was gone. So, this thing here, this thing here had tormented her for years. Her, her back tilted that way. Her hips were like that. And I said, hey, it left. You're healed. Go ahead. Her, her, butt, her butt goes, boop. And her back goes right in front of my eyes. Boop. Just like that. that and she walking down there crying. <laughs> she said, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Mike. Amen. One more thing to add to that, too. They were at the back door leaving over here. I saw you. I wanted to pray with them, so I was like, and, and they were leaving. I saw you. I stopped with Rico and 
I caught them at the door, and they were going out the door. They were leaving. I, and I, Before I saw her? Huh? Before I saw her? Yeah. Oh. Here and I said, hey, uh, let me just pray with you real quick here. And she started talking about dreams or something. I go, well, oh. I don't know about it. Remember I came to you and I said, she's got a problem with dreams? Dreams? Yeah. So they almost got away, so I was praised. So wow. That's a man. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Hey. Teamwork. The devil was getting her out of here. Oh, uh, he was scared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, was the act of hugging her that cast the demon out, or did you? I wasn't here last night. I don't know. Oh, okay. That's fine. I want him out, period. Right. So it was just. So I kept praying for her, be healed, and it wasn't working. See? <laughs> So I thought, this must this is not a healing, this is a spirit. She was bent over like that, her fanny was stuck up that way. Did you see her walking kind of like that? No, she walking straight at arrow. When that thing came out. And I'm glad you described that because that's exactly what I saw, what you said. It went in her spine went. Yeah. I saw it happen. I'm like, I was telling her that was the most amazing thing I ever seen. Yeah. And then I wasn't sure I think we ought to see these things, but you described it the same way, so that's great. That yeah, I saw amazing. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew when she went limp, I knew he was gone. That's a red flag, they're out when they go limp. No, the spirit of infirmity. She had been sick for years. And then last night I got another jolt. Uh, uh, a, mo a mother and a daughter came to the service. Was that you guys? You? You were stand. You were both standing together, right? Side by side, you were praying? At the end. No, at the beginning. Oh, yeah, at the beginning, yeah. because yeah, I came out there, and I, I looked, took a look at the mother, and I said, man, this gal needs to be healed. Mm -hmm. Be healed. <laughs> she flew out of my hands. Wow. See? If you pray for somebody, and they start to give you the slain in the spirit crap, grab them and hold them up. That's, that's a trick. Because the devil, if he can get them to swoon, mm. he's giving them away from you. Uh -huh. So when they start going, I grab them, stand up here. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime the anointing comes on me, and that slap comes in. She, I had no time to catch her. She flies back at 100 miles an hour. Hits her head right here. These are legendary Walmart chairs. See how soft they are? They're comfortable. Her head hit right here. I gulped. Because I'd already looked at her. And uh, not to be insulting, but she doesn't have the body of an Olympic athlete. She's thin, a little on the frail side, and flying through the air like a board and landing your head on there, I kind of stopped. I started to try to recall my insurance agent's phone number. It wasn't coming in. So then I grabbed the daughter and grabbed her and pulled her out because the daughter was sitting there praying her mother disappears. I saw her going like that. I thought, ooh, she probably thinks her mother's dead. <laughs> I wasn't sure. So I went and got the daughter and pulled her up forward. And I said about 10 words to her, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jump on her. And then thank God Danny came around. So I yanked Danny over there. Can you help this gal? She finished her off. Then later on, after the lady with the spirit of infirmity, and the, the mother standing to my left, laughing. 
<laughs> and I thought, you have no idea how relieved. <laughs> no broken neck, no, no insurance call, no lawyers, nothing. And then she started giggling with the joy of the Lord. Before she went flying, there was no joy there. There was no joy there before she took her trip. Uh, it was sick. Sadness, sickness, wounds, everything. <laughs> and then, after I saw her giggling, I grabbed the daughter again. The daughter probably hates my guts because I drag her all over the deliverance center. <laughs> I drag her back over to her mother and say, here, your mother is now a perfect mother now. She was a bad mother when you were young. Now she's perfect. God forgave her. And then I had them both giggling. And that made my night. What happened to you when you went flying there? I had no idea. I've never done that before. <laughs> 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 oh, it did. Oh. But not, you know, I don't know. I didn't even take aspirin when I got home last night. Oh, interesting. Then what were you thinking laying down there? Well, I didn't know. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything leave me. All I remember is just flying and just thinking, oh, my gosh. Right? Because I've been slain in a spirit many times or whatever. But I didn't really, I didn't feel anything. So that something happened? Did something come out? And what, you know, what's, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm scared the devil got kicked in the middle, right? So, I, I honestly don't know. Well, were you uh, awake? Yes. Laying down there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then you got up. Yeah. When? Oh, well, maybe after, I don't know what, what kind of time. It was like, okay, well, 20 minutes or so? Yeah. yeah. And then after you got up, what were you thinking? Just it was still kind of not the shock of being. I'm just like, Shh. but it's like, what what happened? What was this? Did anything really benefit me for doing that? Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you were laughing, what were you thinking? Well, I don't know what I was was thinking. It was just like. It was, I was being called a bad mom, and I was really laughing about it, you know. I mean, it was just... Well, that meant you were healed. <clears throat> yeah, it, was, it was like the joy of the Lord. Yeah, of course it was. And there isn't a but with it, because I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Right? Because I've been through so many things, and I've been through so many things that I've been through, 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 that i have been through this i have been through this Remarkable. I'd like to have a hundred of her every night, wouldn't you? <laughs> wow, we, we'd have so. Have anyone fly like that before? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was at the Australia Jail years ago. Oh. <laughs> what? And I was doing a women's service, and the um, the uh, chaplain over there was Pentecostal. All the other chaplains were heathens. Oh. They aren't even saved. I mean, it's pitiful. Pitiful. And the prisons were worse. They're worse. You had to fight your way past the chaplains to help the people. Not this guy. He was an old Summer of God evangelist. We hit it off like puppies. He shielded me. He, he ran cover for me. He knew what I was doing in there holding deliverance services, he would, he would hide stuff, he, would, he did everything to keep you know, them from finding out what I was doing. But uh, he escorted me over to Australia one day, and uh, I had uh, two or three services over there before, and they were booming. Packed house, packed, women everywhere, looking to get healed. It was utterly amazing. Nothing like this. It was just off the hook. <laughs> So I'm having an altar call. I can't remember what I 
one I taught on. And uh, there's numerous convicts uh, crying, broken. <laughs> I saw some girl in the back, and I wasn't allowed to go in, into the crowd. You're not allowed to go out there. Okay? But this uh, chaplain, he let me do the service myself, which I'm not allowed to do. Uh, Karen couldn't make it that day. So I didn't want to miss the service, so I just went in and took a shot at it. And I got in. He got me in. And then he left. He was pretending to be my partner and took me over there, and then he had to go back to his office. He left me there alone. So I thought, well, there's nobody here. I'm just going to do whatever I want. <laughs> I went to the back there, and some gal was crying her guts up about something. I said, um, you know, God, I think, wants to heal you today, sweetheart. Be healed. And I grabbed her head here like that, and just like that gal, her body flew out of my hands. It startled me. She smashed into the block wall in the back, like Wile E. Coyote. Boom! Hit the back like that. Head hit the brick. Hit the wall and slid down the wall like a cartoon. I never had anything like that happen before. So I ran to the front and started praying for somebody else on the other side of the chapel. How are you? You need prayer? I got as far away from that as I could. Because when somebody slams into a brick wall, I didn't know what was going to happen. I couldn't catch her because phew, it just flew out of my hands. What? She comes up after the service thanking me. Wow. <laughs> she turned her life over to the Lord. She wasn't hurt at all. They left the chapel. She was so happy. She wanted to give me a hug, but she couldn't. That's, it. That's illegal there. You can't hug anybody. And I was at the Yuma prison one day, and we were having an altar call, and this thing was ugly. There were some murderers in the group, and uh, there were no guards, and the chaplain there was Pentecostal. He loved me. And... Uh, he was in the service. Well, during the altar call, this big guy comes up. And uh, as soon as I saw him heading for me, I started speaking in tongues. <laughs> Bald. Huge. And he wants prayer for something. I can't remember what it was for. I said, well, okay. Be healed. The guy starts shaking like this, staggers back, and does a her caper face down on the concrete. There's no carpet in prison. It's all concrete and block. His forehead hit the concrete. I heard it. It made a strange, like, fuck noise. Oh my God, he's, his skull is broken. He's big. It'd be like Preacher Pete coming up here and doing a Peter Pan. Boom. Head right into the concrete. So I quickly found someone else to pray for. <laughs> Voop. I was out of there faster than she was out of my hands last night. He comes up after the serve. Made me have a red mark. There was no red mark on his forehead, nothing. 
He was completely healed. He was so happy that God had forgiven him. He'd done some horrible things. It was like it never happened. I had numerous incidents like that happen in prison. Yeah, I really did. The worst one was in Florence. I had an altar call and the guys were flying into the chairs. And at the end of the service, every chair in the chapel had been knocked over. <laughs> I looked up at the chaplain while I was leaving, and I go, and left. It was one healing and miracle after the other. One after the other. I'll never forget it as long as I live. One guy walked up to me in that same service. There was one chair still standing. He says, while I was down there, I was listening to you. A talk, Brother Mike, and I heard God speak to me about my ministry. And he said, is, is that real? And I said, it won't be unless you say yes. Go ahead. I grabbed him by the throat. He flew through the air and knocked down the last chair. <laughs> so they were all knocked over. Yeah. And when I left, all the, most of the guys were laying on the ground, out. Spiritual bowling. Spiritual bowling. Yeah. Wow. And my philosophy of love completely changed when I had a jail and uh, prison ministry. To see God jump on these hardcore sinners yeah. and just accept them like they were Mother Teresa, blew my mind. Blew my mind. It was amazing. It was amazing. I used to go out to Perryville in the women's prison, and the uh, chaplain out there was this uh, Baptist. The guy's name was Butler. And this guy was a Butler downer. He had zero interest in anything. And when I would go out there, I would hide from him. <laughs> so I didn't want to talk to him. And Karen couldn't come one night. And I didn't want to miss the service. So I went by myself. I wasn't supposed to do it. And I hid from Butler. When he came down from one direction, I jumped in the bathroom. And then when I saw him again, I darted around a corner. I didn't want the guy to see me. I finally got out to the yard where I was to have the service. Place is packed. <clears throat> I told him that story about uh, I told him a story about the one I've told years ago about a, about wrestlers and uh, why God, uh, why wrestlers, the owners and everybody sit up in the boxes and they watch the wrestlers and they act like it's nothing. And uh, all the wrestlers and all the fans are going berserk. But up in the Sky boxes where the millionaires are, they're just sipping Southern Comfort and smoking Cuban cigars, chilling. And I said, the Holy Ghost does the same thing. He sits there while you're going. Through the biggest trials of your life, and it appears that he's doing nothing. And I said, the reason that happens is, the reason those owners do that, the reason the Holy Ghost does that, is because the fight is fixed. Amen. When I said fixed, <sighs> he, <laughs> I'll never 
together. <laughs> like some wind came in. The women heard me say that. The fight is fixed. <laughs> they were crumbling out of their chairs. They were crying their eyes out. Begging God to forgive them. To forgive them. One after the other. Fall on their knees. Falling on their knees. Begging for mercy. Everybody I prayed for either got healed, filled with the Holy Ghost, something. They were all open vessels. And they realized that the hell of their lives was God was watching it and he was setting it up to give them a victory they couldn't even conceive because the fight is fixed and that's true for you the Holy Ghost got your fight fixed the devil doesn't even know it. so I don't know how I got on these stories. Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about, but uh, any questions before we close? I guess that's a good place for me to close. Anybody? All right. I got one. Oh, I know. Just real quick, uh, a lot of people that went on praying with me, uh, doing deliverance with them, grown huge men, mostly dudes, they start weeping. What, what is that? Or crying a lot? What, what, what's up? Uh, no, it's a great blessing. That's what you're looking for. Is that that's, like a soul wound yeah. or a heart wound or something? Well, it could be repentance. You never know. It depends on the case. Okay. They, it may be conviction, which is great. Okay. That's the best thing there is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right, hon? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Love makes you cry, doesn't it? Yes. I said like seven words to her. Boop, she doubled over. I said, well, the Holy Ghost is here. I'm done. <laughs> when he shows up, you're done. He'll take you from there. And there he goes. All right. All right, well. Will you turn that light off above you there? Uh, don't fly up there. Just reach your hand up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, my favorite service of the month is this one. And for obvious reasons, my friends show up and we get to talk together. Thank you for that. And so if anybody uh, needs a touch from God today, there are people here to pray with you. I'll be here. And uh, just stay, and uh, we'll do it. And uh, if not, I'll see you next month. Amen. Amen. Anybody need prayer before you leave? Hey, Mike. Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, healing from my eyes, my stomach. How long you had that? Mm, maybe five months. What were you doing back then? What do you mean? Anything happened to you five months ago, six months ago? As far as negative. Negative. Anybody attack you, hurt you, anything yeah. unusual happened six months ago, seven? Yeah, I got, yeah, I got uh, thrown up against a wall. By? While preaching. Where was that at? An abortion clinic. Oh, an abortion clinic? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so you, it sounds like you're picking up a transfer. Yeah, abortion clinics are tough places to preach because the demons over there are on steroids. That's a murder center. So they're very dangerous. Who attacked you? 
Uh, I would think it would be empty. Oh, some guy. Oh, this was outside yeah, the clinic. They were outside of the clinic. Oh. Yeah, we had two people come up and attack from behind. So she went down and he threw me over. Hit, hit the wall. And then I went to a, a, a chiropractor. And because I have a lot of just hardness here that from the wall, up. yeah. And I was in construction anyway, so it was just over time. And uh, you know, one of the things I saw as I walked in is you know the tree, a tree, like, like the spine coming up, and then like a tree. So the the, the Lord showed me was yoga. Yoga? Yoga, yeah. Uh, but he didn't, there was no, no back cracking that went on. It was just, there's an instrument that he uses, something called the axis. So the bone up the they run it down your vertebra? No, it just, it's just a pressure. Oh. And he it pressurized it. And after it did that, I could feel like a lot of my blood release. It felt better? Yeah, it felt better. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, good. Um, but just that, yeah, just the, just the struggles with ministry. You're really ministering to me with busyness. With, with what? busyness. Oh, yeah, really were you in the ministry or something? Yeah. You're in the ministry? Yeah. Oh, what do you do? Pastor. Oh, you're a pastor? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough job. Yeah. So the Lord's been giving me, you know, more and more cities and more and more territory. The Lord showed me in Luke chapter 19 uh, through the Lord. The Lord says He gives you uh, this man, you know, ten cities because he was faithful in very little. So it's just the little that I've been faithful in seems to be giving more. But uh, I'm just wore out, I'm tired. Do you have anybody who can relieve you or help you? Uh, not really. So it's all this burdens on you? Yeah. So. Well, that's the devil trying to wear you out. Yeah. Yeah. So the end game is going to go bad for you. Right. Yeah, you're going to lose your health. Right. That's what's been happening. That's what's been happening. <laughs> that's what's been happening. Yeah, you're lo going to lose your health. My eyesight. Yeah. My eyesight is like, all of a sudden a couple months ago it started becoming very blurry. Right. I'm starting to see floaters. Yeah. I never had any issues. Yeah. You picked up a transfer. He's hiding in there. Now, other than that guy that attacked you, are there any other people that have stabbed you in the back or betrayed you? Yeah, I had a whole ministry turn against me. And uh, it, just, it was like a 10 hour meeting. It was just pick apart the pastor and everything that I had done. And obviously, I criticizing you? Yeah, criticizing. So and I, then uh, a lot of before that, did you have a bunch of people stab you in the back? Yeah. Has yeah, that been a before. consistent pattern mm -hmm. of betrayers? Yeah. 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 Did your family betray you when you were little? Very, yeah, very abusive. Who, mom or dad? Yeah. Um, uncles, actually. Uncle, were they, I mean, verbally abusive yeah, or sexual? Just, yeah, verbal. verbal? Yeah, verbal? They were hard on you? Yeah. What about your parents? How'd they treat you? Uh, my dad was an alcoholic, uh, so he was very drunk. But what, is he a mean drunk, though? No. No, loving drunk? Okay. How about mom? Yeah, mom, uh, very negative. Was she a critical nitpicker? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. What was her name? Debbie. Debbie, okay. Now this is better. I just close your eyes there and take a big breath. What's your name again? Ryan. Ryan, okay. Father, uh, I wish his mother was here today because I know she was a very wounded human being. I know she was a very wounded human being and that her wounds spilled onto her son and she unwittingly cursed him.
And so now in his ministry, people betray him and criticize him. They nitpick him, just like she did. They find fault with him, like she did. It's the same spirit that stalked him for years. And now, the d demons are even causing Antifa to attack him. And today, we want to pray for all those people that have betrayed him, especially his mother. Because the Bible says, Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother or thy father. And when he was young, he was tired of her criticism, tired of the way she talked to him. And when he was young, he was frustrated and sick of it. The devil took advantage of him. He used his mother to get in and hide, hiding. And so, Mother, in the name of Jesus, we forgive you. We forgive you. Father, I ask you. I wish she was here. I'd pray my heart out for her. Because I know that when she criticized Ryan, those were her wounds. She was a very hurt person. I'm sorry about that, Lord. And I'm sorry about any negative thing Ryan ever said about her, or any negative emotion he ever had toward her. Anything. We repent of it right this second and we renounce it in the name of Jesus. And every word curse she poured over the man of God. We break it off of him today through forgiveness for her mother and these church people and these ministers that have turned on him. As you told us to love our enemies and to bless those who curse us and to pray for those who despitefully use us. That's what you told us to do and that's what we're doing right now. We're going to bless each one of these people that turned on him at the church. Every one of them. Every person that lied about him. Every person that stabbed him in the back when he wasn't around and ran him down, we are forgiving them right this second. When that evil spirit from his mother hiding in his stomach there, you must come out because we have forgiven her today. We have forgiven these church people. We're having mercy on them even when they don't have mercy on us. We are forgiving them even though they have not forgiven us. We are, like you, Lord Jesus, forgive them for they know not what they do. His mother did not understand spiritual things. She did not know she had demons. And they just spoke out of her mouth, just like that, toward Ryan to curse him. Is she still alive? So right now, Lord, in Jesus' holy name, all three of us agree that every spirit from her mother, his mother, hiding in that stomach, has to come out today because we forgive her. We forgive her. Every religious demon, every familiar spirit, every spirit of murder and violence, every demon from an abortion clinic, every spirit of death, you come out of that stomach right now. Ryan commands you to go. Ryan commands you to come up. Mother, I, I release you from my soul. I release you from my heart and I hand you to the Lord.
Today. This ends today. Now, come out of me right now in Jesus' name. Take a breath of mo. There you go. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Mother. Mother, come out.